Check out this official GMAT data sufficiency question from one of the practice tests on MBA.com. Now it is possible to solve this mathematically, but with two minutes per question, that's practically impossible. Especially if you consider what happens to your brain when you go down a path like that. It goes into fight or flight mode, kind of like dreaming that you're in school with no clothes on. So it turns out that the way you're supposed to solve a question like that is with reasoning. And you'll have a much more relaxed mindset when you just kind of think deeply about the situation. It's also going to be a much faster solution. So let's dive in and see what that would look like right now. So I'm just going to focus on statement one for this video. From that statement and from the free information, we can infer that the product UV is 30. Now we can also infer from the free information that the difference of squares for U and V is 11. And we want to find the sum of the squares. Okay, so where are U squared and V squared on the number line? I don't know exactly where they are, but they must be to the right of zero because a square can't be negative, and we know the difference between them is 11. But think about what happens if we try to push u squared up the number line. v squared would have to go up with it to keep that gap of 11 between them. But remember, we know the product of uv is 30. And if u squared and v squared are both moving up, u and v are also both moving up. But what would happen to the product of u and v? if they're both moving up. It would change. It would get bigger. So if we know the product of u and v is 30, then u and v can only be in one spot. Now, to be fair, we do need to consider the mirror image, because we don't know whether u and v are positive or negative. But it doesn't actually matter which side of 0 u and v are, because the question wanted the sum of their squares. And when you square them, they're going to have the same sum regardless of which side of 0 they came from. Now the beauty of data sufficiency is we don't actually have to find the values of u and v, we just need to show that there's only one such possible value. And as we've just seen, knowing the difference of squares of u and v and knowing their product constrains us to a single possible position on the number line and its mirror image. So if this question was asking what's the sum of u and v, we'd say it's not sufficient because if they're positive, we'll get a positive sum, and if they're negative, we'll get a negative sum. But because the question is asking for the sum of the squares of u and v, the mirror image doesn't matter, and really we just have one possible answer to the question, and therefore this statement is sufficient. Go ahead and smash that like button if you enjoyed this video, and of course subscribe to the channel and click that little bell below so that you get notified when I publish new videos. I'll be publishing a new reasoning-based solution to an official guide question every day. So I'll see you in the next one.